Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, November 5th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're tracking uh, the remnants of Ada that moved inland over Central America and continue to drop a lot of rain over this region, causing flooding. And uh, the system has weakened considerably, as expected, and it's been difficult to track well. And at this point in time, it's hard to find where the center of Ada might be. Most of what you see here on the satellite picture in the western Atlantic is a rotation that's associated with mid-level flow. And the mid-level part of the hurricane actually moved over to the west of Central America here, near or south of Guatemala, but it also got stretched out. So we actually have rotation over a much broader region here in a more elliptically shaped circulation in the mid-levels. The surface center of Ada is probably somewhere in here near the coast of Honduras or Belize, and it's difficult to find. Uh, surface observations currently show the lowest pressure along the northern Honduras coastline Line. We do have a north wind at Belize City and then east winds off the coast of Honduras. So we likely have the center of lowest pressure somewhere in here, which is where NHC is locating it, uh, but it's very poorly defined. And we kind of expected this very broad and sloppy at the moment. But you can see there's a large area of disturbed weather in the region, and this has gotten very spread out but it could consolidate again given enough time over the next few days. We have a strong upper level trough coming into the Gulf of Mexico right now. I can show you that on the water vapor satellite loop zoomed out here. There's a ADA and the whole area of disturbed weather associated with it. And we have flow that is shaped like this coming into the Gulf of Mexico, indicating this upper level trough that is going to be moving southeastward over the next couple of days. This southwesterly flow is helping to provide upper level divergence and forcing for ascent and large scale convection breaking out over the Western Caribbean, in addition to the remnants of Ada continuing to bring moist southeasterly flow up into the region. Now, again, this is going to be a little bit complicated because while this does favor thunderstorm activity, which is favorable for redevelopment of a storm, uh, that's about as far as it goes. After that, uh, if a storm forms, then the wind shear that is associated with all this southwesterly flow here, along with the dry air that's lurking in the Gulf of Mexico, would then become inhibiting factors for any storm that eventually forms. And we can see this bear out on some model guidance here. This is the depiction of that upper level trough on the GFS, 200 millibar flow showing exactly what I just showed you on the water vapor satellite picture and this trough is going to continue digging there's our low here north of Honduras and as we go forward in the forecast you'll see this low develop get deeper that number gets lower the pressure is falling a new storm is forming on the model and we can see strong diffluent flow aloft moving away from this area indicating again lots of upper divergence air spreading out aloft forcing the air beneath to rise causing pressure falls and more thunderstorm activity so this is a favorable position for a new storm to form. But as this trough continues to dig into the Gulf, this storm will start moving north on the east side of that. And by the time we get about here, where this storm is now south of Cuba on Saturday afternoon on the GFS, this trough has now encroached close enough that some of this air is flowing directly into the storm from behind. And this is transporting a tremendous amount of dry air into the Northwestern Caribbean. We can see this on the mid-level moisture plot. There's the storm in the same same spot, that upper trough is feeding a conveyor belt of dry air right over the storm center. So while this is a 995 millibar low here in a pretty tight looking circulation, in reality, at least on this model run, uh, the cloud signature here would look anything like a tropical cyclone with a large cloud shield on the north side, a naked south side, and more of a, a comma shaped look to this entire system on this kind of uh, on this kind of forecast. So this is a sloppy situation, one where the storm would be sheared and dealing with dry air. What happens after this part, where it's near Cuba? is still a question as there is a kind of a fork in the road at this point. While it will be facing struggles, what's going to happen eventually is that this trough will continue getting closer and dragging the storm up, and eventually these two will actually potentially interact directly in the sense that the storm could actually end up underneath of this upper level trough. So you can now see the outline of that trough now encompasses the storm. So instead of being underneath of the jet stream that outlines the edge of the trough, 
it is now underneath of the trough itself. And in this situation, that could lead to a transition toward a more classically tropical type of cyclone where the shear decreases and if the dry air is able to mix out, you could see something a little bit more symmetric form. Now, if we look at the moisture field, you can see that as the storm comes up here, it does actually wrap up the moisture into a more symmetric looking region. And that is something that uh, can happen if conditions allow, but it's highly sensitive to exactly how much dry air wraps in, how far around it wraps, and the timing of when the storm moves underneath the upper level trough. And just to illustrate the sensitivity, this is the 18Z GFS from November 5th here. If I go to the prior run at the same time, you end up with a much weaker, broader storm here, 14 millibars weaker on just the prior run uh, because the conditions are a little bit more hostile and there's not as much convection near the center of the cyclone. And that's just to illustrate that there is some sensitivity here and a range of outcomes in terms of how strong this might be as it crosses Cuba. And uh, speaking of where it's going here, the, the steering on this is largely uh, due to that upper level trough. If we look at the 500 millibar level at this time, this is where the storm would be. And there's kind of this trough dipping in over the Gulf of Mexico. And that's kind of swinging this up potentially back toward the west at some point. And so this kind of storm track could take this over Cuba and potentially into the region of the Florida Peninsula. It could also happen a little bit farther to the left than this, not moving over the Florida Peninsula, but near the Keys instead. And we see this on the Euro, where it takes a slightly more westward track. First of all, it takes longer to get away from Belize. The GFS is already out here by Friday uh, compared to the Euro. And then when this comes up, it does get to Cuba like the GFS and does start intensifying, but it turns left much earlier and ends up uh, taking a very sharp turn back into the southern Gulf of Mexico, never quite making landfall in the Florida Keys. So a different track there on that model. And it's a little sensitive because we're talking about, if we look at this 500 millibar pattern, again, this low here, first of all, the position of this is going to be slightly sensitive because it's cut off in a circle. It's hard to track that precisely on modeling sometimes. We have kind of this ridge developing over the eastern US to the north of that low. And so tracking these two features together along with an incoming tropical cyclone or subtropical cyclone, uh, that's, a, that's a tricky steering situation. So there's a little bit of sensitivity here on the track, but the general idea is that since these two are going to interact more or less directly, the new storm here, which will still retain the name Ada, is likely to get entrained into the orbit of this one, if you will. And so that's what's going to pivot this back toward the left. On the GFS, it's into Florida. On the Euro, it's farther southwest than that. But in both cases, there would be heavy weather spread over a wide area because remember, the wind shear is generally out of this direction. So most of that weather, which you can see here on uh, uh, the moisture plot, all the green here is where it's gonna be raining and there's gonna be strong wind coming out of the east into the south part of Florida, no matter what the exact track of this storm center is. So we are expecting a heavy weather event for South Florida, the Bahamas, and Cuba, as well as the Cayman Islands and Jamaica over the next couple of days as we head into the weekend. And the timing on this right now is Sunday in terms of this getting up into the Bahamas and South Florida. How strong could this get? Well, like I said, the range of outcomes here uh, is still kind of sensitive, so there's not a lot of confidence, but we can say it's probably not one of those situations where this is expected to be a major hurricane crossing Cuba and then moving into South Florida as a Cat 3. That's not really the kind of scenario we're looking at. What we're looking at instead is a sloppy system, probably a sloppy tropical storm, winds of 50 or 60 miles per hour near Cuba, and then once it crosses over, maybe there's a door open for it to intensify into a hurricane with winds of 70 to 80 miles per hour, uh, but it's all also possible that it remains a tropical storm if shear and dry air are too much for it and winds stay under hurricane force. That's something we're not going to know a lot about yet. We're still talking about something that's extremely hard to even locate down here near Belize and Honduras. And with everything, with all situations where there's a broad area of disturbed weather, that's hard to pin down always. And until we have a well-defined storm again in the Western Caribbean that we can easily track and we can see has consolidated in a specific spot at a specific time, there's just gonna be some questions. So these are just some of the possibilities we'll be watching as this starts moving northeastward. Right now, NHC is keeping this a tropical storm, following that model consensus, crossing Cuba on Sunday, and then making a sharp turn toward the left. Right now, this is more in agreement with the Euro than the GFS, which comes closer to Florida. But again, either way, broad, wide region here will be getting disturbed weather with gusty winds and heavy rain at a minimum 
over a wide region here as we go through Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday next week. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.